wooded. Those handles are coming out nice. I just got them out of the, uh, got the hiccups. Uh, just got, I just unclamped them and I just did the uh, shaping on my belt, uh, hiccups, <laughs> belt grinder. And uh, coming out nice. Now I'm fixing a, this is some truly, this is some really hard, hard wood. Even my uh, belt grinder with an 80 grit belt on it had a hard time getting through this. So it's going to be a lot of handwork. But I like, this is the part of knife making I really like the most is shaping the handles. So I, uh, I may get some true oil on this today. Wouldn't that be something? Well, <clears throat> i got to tell you, this is some of the nicest wood I have ever had. It was expensive, and uh, originally I was going to charge another $30 for this knife to cover the uh, the cost of the wood, but I decided not to. I get $155 for these caddos, and uh, I can't put this kind of wood on them all the time. But uh, if you want a caddo and you want to spend an extra 30 or 40 bucks, I can get some wood like this. This is a uh, Honduran rosewood. And I've done nothing but sand it yet. I'm fixing to take it to the house and start putting the uh, true oil on it. But first I'm going to, I hit it with some sandpaper right there. So I'm going to put it back on my Scotch-Brite belt and uh, knock them back out of there. And then go to the house and start putting true oil on it. God, that's a beautiful piece of wood. Took me about four hours. This is this is some of the hardest wood I've ever sanded by hand. And it's taken me about four hours to uh, sand this. Boy, oh boy, I like that wood. Well, I am working on uh, uh, the sheath for the caddo. That would be this caddo. Is that not some beautiful wood or what? Man, oh man. And here is the dinner skinner. I got the sheath for this. <clears throat> what I do is, uh, this is what I do now. I put resoline over the die on the inside of the sheath because what seems to happen is the die rubs off on the knife handle. It doesn't if I put resoline on it. So uh, I got a heater right there. It's kind of cold out. I mean, really cold out. So I got a heater, kind of, it's not blowing on it, but it's blowing past it. Actually, it's really cold in here, so I may have to raise this up. Why are you not putting out much air? Anyway, I got to let this dry a little bit before I uh, sew the uh, belt strap on. And then glue this with a webbing in it. So I'm going to let that set a couple hours, just like that. In the meantime, I'm working on the caddo. Boy, I'll tell you, I'm liking this satin finish. That's the uh, spalted, not spalted, burled, uh, stabilized cherry right there. I still got, once I get the sheath, everything, you know, I'll go over this one last time with a, a scotch bright. Alrighty, let me uh, get this one going. Oh yeah, I got uh, my leather shop. <laughs> I got it set up kind of nice. You know, I've slowly I've sort of turned this into a convenient space to do my sharpening and my leather work. And I uh, got this is where I stamp my logo right here. This is uh, the logo stamper. And here are the logos. Here's the Navy stamp. And uh, I really don't have anything to do with that, that now. So I, it's sort of a wasted corner. And uh, what I want to do, I want to put another little something right here where I can put additional stuff. I may, now I can't move that because it has doors that swing open right here and my legs would be in the way. 
I do I want something right here though because I like to set stuff there and set stuff here and uh, there's a lot of stuff that go into sheath making <sighs> and uh, you know slowly but surely it's taken me a lot longer to get to improve uh, my sheath making than it has taken me to improve my knife making and uh, I didn't think sheath making would be as difficult as knife making, but it truly is. And uh, there's lots and lots of room for improvement. Every sheath I make, I look at it with a very critical eye and I see all the stuff I need to fix or make better or do better, just like my knives. Uh, I mailed a couple of Texas Rumbles out and they are great knives. I was really happy with the sheaves and that each of them had uh, a minor flaw that I'm going to do better on on the next Texas Rumbles. And that is such a long knife and such a thick piece of steel to start with that the very tip of the knife, uh, I'm having a hard time making it come out right. And I know what to do now. So uh, the last two knives I sold, the tips were somewhat lacking, I would say. So let me tell this to anybody that buys a knife. Uh, I have said this before, and it still stands. Maybe uh, new people don't know this. Uh, I have a money-back guarantee. If I ship you a knife and you are not happy with it, uh, I will refund your money. Ship the knife back, and I'll give you your money back because uh, I don't want any knives out there that people don't uh, appreciate. You know what I mean? I don't mean, I don't mean that in a mean sense, but uh, every knife that leaves my hands, I've put every ounce of skill that I have at that time into that knife. And it may not be as good a knife as I build the next time. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not happy with the level of skill I am at, when you buy that knife, return it. And uh, maybe two years from now, you know, think about buying a knife again when I'm better than I was two years ago. So that's all I'm saying. If you buy a knife from me, uh, it comes with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, within a reasonable amount of time, if you keep it a month and it's used, you know, it's yours. But uh, if you get it on a Monday and you decide during the week that you don't like it, ship it back to me. Uh, I'll give you your money back. No questions asked and no hard feelings. Okay. Uh, somebody gave me a tablet, and uh, which is just a perfect size here. I just made this little, little thing here. Just went out to the table saw. And... Uh, so I can watch Terrell or, well, I got Westerns on the TV, so I'm fixing to watch Terrell. Okay, back to work, everybody. All right, there's Frank's. Now I gotta put an edge on the blade. I've got to take this to the house and put a fan in front of it because the sheath is wet. Uh, let me see if I can get this out with one hand. And uh, I don't want to leave the knife in there. You see the, the moisture on the knife? So uh, I've got to set this up like that and set it in front of a heater and dry it out. And uh, I'll have this done today. This is Glenn's. I'm fixing to get that sewed up next. Let's see, what is today? Wednesday, right? Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to get these edges on uh, Thursday or, or Friday morning. And uh, I'll have these both in the mail Friday. But uh, I I may have to put the edges on Friday morning. Okay, let me get to work. I'm gonna uh Put this to the side for now, sew this one, and then bring them both to the house and let them dry overnight and see what tomorrow holds. If it rains tomorrow, I won't be working outside, so uh, I'll be sharpening these up and, uh, and uh, getting them ready for their final destination, cleaning them up one last time.
Okay, I have two more done. This is uh, paid for. I just let this fella know that uh, I was done, and if he liked it, I sent him pictures, uh, sent him my PayPal address. I have to let these dry before I can ship them, because I ship these with the knives in them, and uh, they're, they're still wet. They'll be dry probably midday Friday. Uh, and before I do that, this is the last thing I do. I have this uh, final coat that I put on the outside with my dauber. But I wait until the sheath dries because it doesn't just dry from the inside. It dries out this way too. And if I put this coating on it before it dries, it won't. And I have experienced this before. I sent a knife to somebody twice, two times. One to Canada and one, uh, I think it was my friend Phil up in Indiana. I think he got a rusty knife. And that was before I realized that it may have felt dry on the outside, but it was not dry on the inside. And I put the knife in it and shipped it out. And a guy in Canada, it was a birthday present for his son. I felt so bad. He got it and it was rusty. And uh, that was $23 to ship it to him. I offered to pay for shipping back. And uh, either sand it down or make him another knife. But he said he was cool with it. He sanded it off. And uh, Phil did the same thing. I don't know if, whether he uh, did it with steel wool or not. But anyway, these are done. So, um, and next I'm going to work on Glenn, not Glenn, uh, Jeff. This is Glenn's. Uh, Jeff in Montana. I'm going to work on his. And then I'm going to work on Steve's. And then I have a fellow that wants a dinner skinner with walnut handles and uh, stone washed. So, uh, that, that will be after Steve's Texas Rumble, the highly polished one. Okay. So, this is, uh, this project is done. I don't know what it is about driving with his head out the window, but he don't wag over much. <laughs> I have no idea why that's so appealing to him. <laughs> well, it's breeding season, so... They Those are all building buzzards. Build a nest. They've always hung out here. Oh, look, here's some more over here. Dang. Who died? Oh, man. Like 10 of them over here. You're older than me. I think they're waiting on you, hon. Look, here's some over here. I can't see them up there. I'm underneath they're the... They're moving toward you. They're fixing to become one. 